Up front. Okay. A 10 meter long ladder weighs 325 newtons. It is at an angle or an elevation angle of 70 degrees, and that's with respect to the horizontal. The wall is frictionless, therefore it can only have a normal force, not a parallel force, along its surface. The ladder is sitting on a ground, and the ground must have friction so that it doesn't slide away from the wall. Okay, what do we want? What's the question? Let's put the cursor there. I don't see the cursor. I just hope it's there. Um, what is the force from the wall? And what is the uh, coefficient of friction that is uh, needed to keep the keep the ladder in equilibrium. Okay, so um, the wall is frictionless, so a frictionless surface can only push directly away. So if you stand on ice, the ice is supporting you. It's pushing with the normal force, but as soon as you push to the side, it doesn't push back because that's a horizontal force. So the wall can only push away because it's a frictionless wall. But the floor isn't, and thank goodness, because there's two things that we need here with the force at the bottom here. We're going to choose our pivot point to be down here. Okay, and the pivot point, when it sits on the ground, there's going to be a force upward, which is again the normal force. But there's also going to be a frictional force, because if there was no friction, the ladder would slide out. It would just fall down to the ground and lay flat on the ground. Bec so there has to be a frictional force in this direction. So we have four forces. We have the force of gravity of the ladder acting from the central uh, center of gravity of 325 newtons. We have the wall force, we don't know it, but we know where it exists. 10 meters away from the pivot point. We have the normal force at the pivot point pushing up onto the ladder to stop it from sinking into the ground. And a frictional force along the ground to stop it from sliding along the ground and falling down to the ground. So, it's in static equilibrium. And I guess this should be a question mark here. And what is the coefficient? So we start off with, as usual, the sum of the forces in the x direction. And it's, since it's in equilibrium, they must equal zero. What are the forces in the x direction? There's a wall. So the force of the wall to the left has to equal the frictional force. That's the only one going to the right the force of friction. What is the force of friction? Well, in physics 11, if you don't remember, it was classified as mu times the normal force. And in physics 11, almost always it was just mg. So it would be mu mg. Okay, now the sum of the forces in the y. That also must equal zero. So the downward force is the force of gravity from the of the ladder. 
and the upward force is the normal force. So we already now know what the normal force is because the force of gravity is 325 newtons. So that's the normal force. Oh, that also then gives us what that, uh, well, gives us a little bit more information. We still don't know what mu is, but we're now given what the normal force is. So let's go down, and this gives us the force on the wall is equal to mu times 325 newtons. So all I need now is the force of the wall pushing on the ladder, and I can calculate mu. Okay. Let's just zoom out a little bit to get a little bit more room. So the only other part of equilibrium that we haven't done yet is the torques. So let's do that. The sum of the torques equals zero. That means the torques uh, counterclockwise has to equal the torques clockwise. Now, ahead of the game, I already told you that I put the pivot point down at where the ladder touches the ground. Why did I put it there? because we didn't know what the normal force was or the frictional force was at that point. So by putting the pivot point there, we get rid of two of the unknowns. So now we only have the wall and the force of gravity causing the torques. There's no other torques added onto the system because these forces going are going right through the pivot point. So the counterclockwise one is the wall. Okay, so we now need to go F of the wall times how far that is away times the sine of the angle between these two vectors, the force from the wall as well as the distance vector from the pivot point. And that has to equal the ladder's torque. And that's the clockwise one, so that's the force of gravity of the ladder times where that force of gravity is, the distance to the center of gravity, times the sine of the angle between, and I'm going to change that angle, I'm going to write down alpha instead of theta because theta is a different angle in this case, and we're going to investigate that right now. But that's the torque of the ladder is equal to the torque of the wall. So what is this angle here? That angle is the force between the force and the ladder. That's the this D. Okay. This is 70 from the description in the words up top here. So this must also be 70 degrees. So that we'll call that our theta is 70 degrees. That's just move that over. Now we need the angle between the force of gravity and the distance to the center of gravity. So in other words we want that angle there. And we'll call that alpha. And what is that angle? 20 degrees. Very good. So now we'll plug this all in these numbers, because our free body diagram here, which is superimposed right on top of the diagram itself. So what color should I choose? Uh, let's choose orange. The force of the wall, uh, we don't know that. That's what we're trying to figure out. The distance to that is 10 meters, and that's the sine of 70 degrees. That has to equal the force of gravity of the ladder, so that is 325 newtons, 
the distance to that is th five meters because it's halfway up the ladder and the angle there is sine of 20. So the only thing we don't have here is the f of the wall. So f of the wall is equal to Turn it on. Doot. Okay, so let's take 325 times 5 times the sine of 20 divided by 10 divided by the sine of 70. So the force from the wall is 59.145 newtons. And now it says, what is the force from the wall? We've done it. That's question one. And question two is, what is the coefficient of friction? Well, that's mu. Mu is going to equal force of the wall all over 325. So the coefficient of friction that's necessary is taking this force here and dividing by 325. So I'll take the answer and divide that by 325 and I get a coefficient of friction of 0.182. So mu. So that is the force of friction that is necessary for it to not slide out. So if we had a coefficient of friction of 0.15, that ladder would start sliding down. So there is the uh, introduction to your first ladder question. Okay.